There are about 47 fatalities on South Africa's roads every single day. That's according to lead SA Arrive Alive. What would happen if you're involved in a car accident on a quiet road with little likelihood of anyone witnessing the accident or rendering aid? Accident victims may also not be in a condition to summon help themselves. But now a new mobile app, Crash Detect, can detect a crash on impact and then summon medical help. But joining me now in studio to help us work out how this works is Yaku Gerritz, who is the Chief Executive of Dynamis Technologies. Yaku, thank you so much for joining us. This sounds great. How does it work exactly? So first of all, thanks a lot for, for having me today. In short, what the app does is as soon as you start driving, it's going to automatically detect that you are driving. So it's going to switch on our crash detection algorithm. If you're involved in a serious car crash, it will pick it up automatically. It's going to pinpoint your location and we're going to dispatch the nearest ambulance. So we've basically combined different technologies and also a national service network of EMS providers to make sure that we cut down emergency response times and also ensure that you receive the correct medical treatment. So response time is definitely key, but also when it comes to medical treatment, there's many cases where people are involved in a car crash. If the paramedics arrive at the scene, um, they might not be qualifying or identifying information at the crash of the scene. And if they are unable to determine how to obviously treat you, there's severe implications. Also, if you qualify for access to private care, but they are unable to ascertain that, you'll still end up going to state hospital. So there's a number of pain points that we're trying to address with the solution that we've developed. How does it differentiate between a fender bender and a major accident? Yeah, so major accidents uh, will generate an excess of 30 Gs. So there's a couple of uh, limitations when it comes to the, the technology on a smartphone. So your threshold limit on the accelerometer itself, which is the sensor that we use, is much lower. For example, um, on some of the lower end devices, we can only monitor up to 3.46 Gs. So what we had to do, and this was really the technical challenge for us, is to develop an algorithm that can consistently and also accurately detect serious car crashes. Not so much, obviously, the higher thresholds, but the smaller events that could potentially occur, for example, dropping your phone. Um, what we call it is false positives, and we need to eliminate false positives, so in short, false crash alerts. And that was really the technical challenge for us. So the, the initial development roadmap said that we were going to take about six months, and it ended up taking us 18 months. So it was, it was definitely a, a difficult technical challenge. Has this been taken up yet? What's been the response? Yeah, so we launched the company towards the end of last year. We wanted to start all very small and then we ended up winning a competition, the top social venture in South Africa. And we're now representing our country in New York um, later this year. So very excited about that. But what has happened is due to the exposure, um, obviously we've seen massive growth. And I don't think we were ready in January, but we definitely are now. So there was still a couple of outstanding items that we had to address. Uh, very happy with where we are now and also in terms of how we commercialize the technology. So there's two sides to the business. The B2C one, you can sign up for the app today. And the other option is where we integrate our technology into third-party apps. So we license the technology to, to parties where it makes sense. So how much does it cost if I wanted to get the app? Sounds good. I mean, if I'm on a lonely road in the middle of the night and I'm in a huge accident, I'm going to want to have this. Absolutely, definitely. So we've got four subscription options. Uh, there's a free option, which gives you 30 trips per month, just to test out the technology and to see how it works. Then we've got a classic subscription, which is 49 Rand a month. We've got a premium subscription, which is 89 Rand a month, and the elite subscription, which is 109 a month. So just on the elite subscription, you actually have nine unique benefits. So we've got crash alert, you've got a medical emergency button, you've got a medical ID going in the back right window. We will send you an armed security guard anywhere in South Africa if you feel unsafe next to the side of the road. We'll dispatch, uh, or we'll dispatch a criminal lawyer anywhere in South Africa to represent you in person. Um, and we also now introduce a new feature which we call the tax logbook. So the fact that we are monitoring trips automatically we will now allow you to download all of your trips um, as part of your financial year or your logbook requirements for SARS. So there's actually a lot of added benefits that's embedded into our subscription options. Um, and that's why I say for the 109, you actually get a lot. And you can also install it on up to five uh, family members' phones. Let's talk about New York. This uh, sounds very promising. Um, now, being in this technology world, a lot of apps that people are coming up with, you're going to be contending with other entrepreneurs What's going to be your differentiating factor? Yeah, I think the, the big thing for us is so uh, we obviously are app, so we're in the technology space, but we are competing for the best social venture in the world, so trying to make the world a better place. So I had the opportunity to meet all of the finalists or the 26 other finalists from the other countries and definitely strong, strong contenders. I think the, the one thing that differentiates us is, yes, there's social impact, but we are very much 
um, I won't say profit centric, but business minded. So we want to drive the business in order to obviously achieve the social impact. And I think on that side, we've tested our assumptions against the market. We've got a very clear idea in terms of how we're going to commercialize the solution. We've got various distribution channels and everything has been proved up to date. So for us, it's really just about scaling what we're already doing. So it's not really an idea anymore. It's an actual business. And we are at the point where we obviously now want to want to ramp it up big time. What does it look like in five years from now? Five years from now, I think there's key services that we want to, uh, want to introduce to um, improve, not improve, but maybe just complement our key value proposition, which is saving lives. So one of the features that we're looking at at the moment is called Good Samaritan. So yes, an ambulance will be dispatched or the nearest ambulance will be dispatched um, to you if there's a medical emergency. But over and above that, there's a lot of people that are qualified in CPR that might be closer than the ambulance. So what we want to do is almost call it the Uber for emergency services. So we want to have this network across South Africa of people that are qualified to assist. Whenever there is an emergency, we'll dispatch the nearest individual that can assist. So obviously at the end of the day, what we want to do is save more lives. Yaku, now obviously in this process, like you said, there have been some teething problems. I always ask any entrepreneur, anybody that's come up with an app to share their challenges and their difficulties. What has it been like you know, really getting to this point? What's been the hardest thing? How did you overcome it? Absolutely. I think, well, I've been running my own companies for the last 14 years. And whenever entrepreneurs come to me, they say, okay, but how did you get through this and that? And I always say, you know what, there's external challenges like access to funding, talent acquisition, but in internal challenges are really the, the ones that you need to look out for. So there's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be a fear of failure. And I always say that the relationship with self is key. How do you deal with the challenge as soon as you are confronted by a challenge? How are you going to push through? And also, also the, irrespective of the, the obstacle that's in front of you, how are you going to chase down that dream? And I think if you can sort out the relationship with self, adopt a positive mindset and have this go-getter attitude, nothing can ever be big enough. When you're coming back uh, from New York, we want an update. So I'm coming, coming back from New York. Um, I think I'm leaving on the 10th and then they, we're there for seven days. So I think I'm back on the 17th and yeah, I would be happy to come back hopefully with uh, some good news. Fantastic. Good luck to you and uh, we'll have you back so you can give us an update on that. Great. Very big Appreciate thank you to Jaco Gerets. He's the Chief Executive of Dynamis Technologies.